For months I've been planning this trip to the highlands of Iceland and here are my favorite locations for hiking, photography and filmmaking. Okay, now we are at Haifoss and I was not planning on covering this location, this waterfall originally in this video, but it is so beautiful and photogenic that I have to talk to you about it. It is with 122 meters, 4 meters higher than Hengifoss and therefore also in the top 3 of highest waterfalls in Iceland. It is just north of Landmalalauge and you can park right up there, just walk for 3-4 minutes and you are right there. There are two spots, main spots. I would say maybe you see the people in the background there. Uh, I think actually that one is great to see both Haifoss and its smaller sibling Bada -ba -bum -bum. and there's another smaller sibling Bada Bing Bam Boom. I don't know what they're called, that's obviously. And then you could shoot also from here. Actually, if you're lucky with the sunlight and uh, the position, you can also see a beautiful rainbow. Um, I'm shooting with a mixture of wide lenses and a zoom, so the 11 to 20, as well as the 70 to 200 to get some detail shots. Um, with a wide angle, you are able to get the two main waterfalls in the canyon in here. Um, so definitely worth going out here. It's not much of a drive. You should check it out if you have the chance to. Cool. Alright, now we are at a place that, uh, despite my extensive research about the best locations in the Highlands, didn't even get on my radar until I actually met Julian, who's currently filming, who I met at the volcano. Remember the times when I crashed a drone into a volcano? That day I met him. But he was showing me fo photos of this place, Laungishur, or something like that. And it's, it's an absolutely staggering, like mind-blowing place um, that is really defined by these lakes that stretch through this valley here. And we just saw a magnificent sunset here. And you want to get up to an elevated point to enjoy this vista here. Um, there's a campground down there where you can just like park and uh, overnight. And the way to get here is actually through this valley here and it takes about two and a half hours from road one, the ring road, to get here on gravel roads and you have to go through two bigger-ish uh, rivers. Uh, so always be careful, check the water levels. Um, that's very important, but once you get there, it's very, like we have a very calm day today. It's like there's zero wind basically, which is amazing and very uncommon for Iceland, frankly. Now we actually have these clouds coming in over from the ocean. It's a little bit off the beaten path, so you actually don't see that many people, but that's why we're going into the highlands, right? All right, let's go to the next location. The next location that I'm really excited about 
is Stulagila and there's tons of flies around so you have to wear one of these silly nets because they don't bite, they don't sting, they just sit on your, your eyeballs if you let them. So always good idea to bring one of those in summer. But Sudlagila is this canyon that has these basalt columns on both sides and bluish water running through it. It's beautiful. I've seen so many gorgeous photos, so I want to check it out myself. And you have two ways to get there, actually. Like first you take off road number one if you come from Igor Stadil. You just take the 923 and then head southwest. At some point you come across a sign that says, turns left and says Tutlagil, that takes you to a parking lot right at a bridge uh, for this river here. Uh, now if you don't have a 4x4 wheel drive, you don't really want to necessarily trash your car or go over the bumpy road, I recommend parking there. It's possibly a 50 minute hike from there. There's also the option to drive further down on this kind of road here and get to another parking lot. From there the hike is only 25 minutes but then on the other side of the canyon they just built a new like viewing platform that gets you just like this is like a minor two minute three minute hike from there doesn't get you into the canyon but gives you a little bit of an overview from the other side so these are your two options now for the best composition you actually want to climb down these basal columns here it's not that tricky unless you carry 30 pounds of a backpack with you but I uh, have this low point here, you can shoot into the canyon, especially if you have nice clouds. It gives a little bit more depth and texture as well. But this is where you need it. I don't know if you see it, but there's tons of flies all around me and also in front of the camera. I have no, no solution for that. So you see um, these little flies zipping in front of the lens all the time. But I think it's also a great location to fly through with the drone. Uh, especially an FPV drone zipping through the canyon like Anakin Skywalker in a pot racer. That's up next. But guess who forgot his props in the car? So, what I'm gonna do is go back and then fly from there. The light is not in my favor either. But maybe later on we will have some sunset popping. So, that may be actually better. Let's see. Now, if you're wondering why on earth there are never people around me when I'm shooting, it's because I'm shooting either in the wee morning hours, like right now, or late at night. And it has two benefits. A, there's no people in your frames. Great. And B, uh, you have the best light. In summer in Iceland, you have this perpetual sunrise and sunset from, you know, 9 p.m. through 5 a.m., 6 a.m., what we have right now, and can really benefit from less people and the most beautiful light. So, adjust your sleeping schedule. All right, now we are at Hevera Villier. Villier? Hevera Villier. All right, so now we are at Hevera Villier, which is literally in the middle of Iceland. It's actually a place I've been to seven years ago specifically for this blue pond. And now you may ask yourself, well it's not blue anymore. I don't know what happened but I took a photo back then and it was the only Highland location I went to on my first trip because it is fairly accessible if you have a 4x4 van. You don't need to cross any rivers. The F35 gets you here and it's one of the streets, Highland Streets, that opens the earliest in the season in around early mid-June. And this geothermal hotspot where the Eurasian and American plates are diverging is a very mysterious location because every time I've been here twice, uh, it's always overcast and cloudy. And I actually had to wait out the weather right now because it was so windy before. And I was hoping that the sky, especially here, opens up, but it didn't. By the way, there's a hot water pool. If you're here, definitely take a dip in that. It's really, really comfortable, uh, very silky water, and it's, it's great to enjoy, but 
it's a little bit more challenging to find a good spot to shoot here. But let's see what we get. Alright, to wrap things up, I'm now at Melifiet, which is this cone volcano, which is about 10,000 years old and about 800 meters high. It's located north of Mildalsjökull, which is this glacier here in the background. And uh, you can get here the easiest way from the south. And either you take F210 and you have to cross a river, which is a little bit more on the more difficult side and you want to see what the weather conditions are and how high the river is. But there's also the F232, which I'm going to take the way back, which is supposedly a little bit easier and goes closer to that uh, glacier here. But uh, what makes this volcano really stand out is that it's completely covered in green moss. So what you want to do is actually get a drone up to really get the contrast um, between the greenish volcano, which happens to be the same color as my shirt, and the black desert here that you have. The weather conditions here are ever changing and it's been like really super windy and I don't know, now it's actually picking up again. Um, so it, all, the, all the dust is being spewed up and, and is in this valley here, it's like this misty situation right now. But as always in Iceland, you have to fight with the elements. If you ever wondered how I'm doing these animations in my videos, I've been actually using for years plugins from Motion VFX, and they were so kind to let me try out the new 3D tracking, which you see throughout this video. Totally recommend checking out this stuff with the link in the description below. Now, if you want to know how to travel in the Highlands, check out this video right here. And if you happen to be in Iceland in winter, you cannot really go into the Highlands, but I listed my favorite locations for winter Iceland right here. And if you enjoyed this video, give it an old thumbs up and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye.